introduce him. He is an architect and urban designer working at the interface of urbanism, infrastructure, and dynamic coastal ecosystems. He is an associate professor in the School of Architecture at the University of Florida and associate director of the Florida Institute for Built Environment Resilience, also known as Fiber. Jeff leads the Florida Resilient Cities program, which we'll hear more about here shortly. Um, they work with communities across the state to connect resilience challenges with UF faculty and students throughout research opportunities. The inaugural city, Port St. Joe, just west of Tallahassee here, um, is still recovering from Hurricane Michael, and we'll hear what they've done specifically in that community, um, again, to make them more resilient. Previously, Jeff was the director of LSU's Coastal Sustainability Studio, and he led the development of the Louisiana Resilience Assistance Program that continues to assist communities throughout Louisiana to build resilience and adaptive capabilities. Jeff received his BA in architecture from Washington University in St. Louis and master's degree in both architecture and city and regional planning from the University of California, Berkeley, where he received um, a fellowship to study neighborhood scale urbanism in locations around the world. So Jeff, the floor is yours and we look forward to hearing from you. Great, thank you, Samantha. Um, and I think that's it, okay. So thank you all very much for, for joining us today. Um, as Samantha said, I'm Jeff Carney. I'm a faculty member in the School of uh, Architecture and the Associate Director of the uh, Florida Institute for Built Environment Resilience. I'm here today to talk about how we're building resilient communities uh, through the program called the Florida Resilient Cities Program. So real briefly, uh, a bit about Fiber. We're a, a relatively new organization in our third year uh, here, made up of seven faculty members uh, postdocs and uh, graduate students uh, centered in the College of Design, Construction, and Planning. Uh, and we take a very broad range uh, approach to the challenges related to resilience in the, in the built environment. I think the diversity and range of experience in fiber will allow us uh, to ask some really difficult questions and get involved in some of the most challenging problems that we have today. And so to kick that off, um, the in 2009, uh, Johann Rockström made a, a quite ominous projection that the crossing of a series of planetary boundaries could result in, quote, irreversible and in some cases abrupt environmental change, leading to a state less conducive to human development. Uh, the statement is sobering to say the least. Uh, the safe carrying capacity of Earth, according to the research, is represented by the green circle uh, on the inside there. Um, and that we are far, far beyond that boundary in three of nine categories. And what's, I think, particularly significant here is, is the suggestion that we're entering a time of potentially extreme uncertainty uh, in, in the future um, conditions on this planet. And what does this mean for Florida? Uh, across the Southeast, and especially in Florida, the result is an impending collision between population growth and a history of risky uh, development uh, with sea level rise and increasingly extreme weather. Uh, this is leading Florida towards a vulnerability tipping point with dire economic, social, and ecological consequences that include amongst uh, a range of issues, damaging and disruptive flooding, affordable housing shortages, um, potentially mass migration, uh, market disruptions and declining property values. Uh, and rapid environmental change that could undermine uh, Florida's appeal, the reason why many people visit. Looking at the map, we see that Florida is at elevated risk for multiple hazards. Um, when you combine this with the social vulnerability, we see that Florida faces significant uh, risk in the next uh, coming uh, 50 to 100 years. And so I think the, 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 the fundamental principle here uh, but I, it, it, before we get too depressed after what I just said, um, things have always changed. Things change. And to ignore or resist this change is to increase our vulnerability and, and highlight this, to forego emerging opportunities. Uh, this quote is very important. And I think that the foregoing of emerging opportunities is the thing I would like to concentrate on. Uh, things have always changed. So the, the, the concept of resilience, according to the Rockefeller Resilient, 100 Resilient Cities Program, is the capacity of individuals, communities, institutions, businesses, and systems to survive, adapt, and grow no matter what kind of uh, 
chronic stresses and acute shocks they experience. And so well, briefly, I'm going to talk about these three different conceptions of resilience. And the, the first on the left, you have an idea of engineering resilience. And imagine a, a bridge. It moves, but it comes back to exactly the same place where it began. That's what we want our bridges to do. Um, ecological resistance, on the other hand, there's periods of stability. However, an ecological system can transform. It can adapt into a new period of stability. And what we're saying with adaptive resilience is, in essence, the, these two concepts together, that we will have moments of, of, of um, stability and we will adapt into new moments. But the, the, the important point of this is the ability to adapt, not knowing what that next uh, condition will be. What is that next condition of stability? We, we don't know. So in a sense, it's the ability to be prepared to adapt to unforeseen uh, circumstances. And so that leads uh, me to the Florida Resilient Cities Program. Uh, FRC helps communities across Florida develop the capacity to be more prepared for and more resilient to increased risk. The program bridges community needs with design research through the College of Design, Construction, and Planning, partnered with faculty from across the University of Florida. Um, we started the program in 2019, and it was a partnership uh, and remains a partnership amongst a, a, a few really important people. Uh, Bill O'Dell from the Schimberg Center for Housing Studies, Mike Volk uh, from the Center for Landscape Conservation Planning, and Cleary Larkin, who is the coordinator of the program, uh, amongst, as you'll see, a host of other uh, partners. So there's a few principles to the program that I want to talk about first. The first is taking a design thinking approach. Design projects can connect the values and goals of a broad range of stakeholders behind strong and optimistic community visions. Uh, this process uh, encourages an iterative uh, process of engagement um, where we empathize, we learn to empathize with the people whom we are connecting with. Uh, a, a process of definition of, of the problem, uh, rapid ideation or, or design exploration, uh, prototyping, the making, the, this sort of presentation of visions of future conditions, and then last testing. And that we, we need to construct, we need to make places in the world and test them and, and, and explore that in order then to learn how to do the whole process better. So it is a sort of iterative process and it's important um, for a number of reasons. The first is this idea of co-design, that we can connect um, community members with designers through this process of engagement, uh, allows community input to be that much more important. Um, the importance of testing and that again, that idea that conditions will continue to change and that we need to be able to test and, and adapt our designs as we move forward. And third is this idea of positive change even when conditions are uncertain. Design enables us to go beyond what we know. The second principle is building, is uh, applying the best science for effective problem solving. Um, this, this image on the right is uh, by an engineering firm named Arup. Uh, that they did for the Rockefeller uh, Re Resilient Cities program. And it looks at the complete complexity of stakeholders, of policy structures, of environmental conditions, and teases out how a, how a city is this sort of incredible network of, 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 of inputs and outputs. Uh, in working in this is extremely challenging, but it's essential that we do. And I think the importance of this is, you know, as a, as a university, is that, uh, and I would argue that, that as a land grade institution, the application of science to solve these problems in our communities is our fundamental mission. And that that bridge between the complexity of the problem is actually the, the space where we should be. Um, we have the talent to do it uh, at UF and other universities. Um, all of the people working on these issues are here. It's about making those connections. Um, the, the, the benefit of this, to say the further benefit of this, is the better that we get at engaging around these issues, at connecting the complexity of the science with the problems on the ground, the faster that food feedback loop becomes and the, and the, and the better the, the science and the better the application becomes in time. Um, so uh, the third one is building local adaptations towards statewide transformation. Um, it's imperative that it's extremely important that we build local projects 
uh, and that those local projects can then produce the best practices that can that can impact the state as a whole and speak all the way up to the federal government. Um, it's not a top-down approach or a bottom-up approach. It's really about the network and the connectivity across scales. So the program, uh, as it began in 2009, started in um, Port St. Joe. And this was shortly after uh, the 2018 hurricane uh, Michael uh, made uh, landfall of about 10 or 15 miles down the road in Mexico Beach. And so the damage in Port St. Joe was quite significant. Um, the goals of the program were to empower and synthesize values and goals of a broad range of stakeholders, to incorporate uh, dependable and, and robust baseline data um, uh, that expresses the future conditions of the place uh, with design challenges that the community faced at that moment, and then building real local capacity for the community to implement change, not only to work with us in the, in the year or two that we were there, but then to build change in the long term. So the first phase of the program uh, to, it, it is uh, what we call the um, needs assessment, where we essentially listened to the community. We ran a workshop where we brought a number of community members together uh, to discuss the issues and really capture the, the challenges that the community faces so that we can then bring that is those issues back to UF faculty uh, to connect around them and, and determine um, how to move forward. So phase two, the building partnerships phase, we bring those, those concerns back to the university and we, we requested or we created a request for faculty proposals uh, for projects based upon community identified needs. So the issues that came up in our initial meeting. The FRC program provided um, $10,000 projects, a maximum of a total of $50,000 back to faculty across campus. Uh, to fund six to eight projects in the spring semester of that year. They could be courses, they could be faculty-led research, they could be uh, mentored student research. Um, we selected eight projects uh, last year, uh, with basically three themes, one around community narratives. We uh, are, are, are working with faculty on a cultural resource survey, uh, other faculty on building trust through stories, through the, 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 the kind of history of and, and the reaction to the hurricane. Um, rural tourism and home sharing, a uh, series of projects around built natural landscapes, uh, critical, critical infrastructure network, um, a resilient park system, um, resilience, well-being, and natural resource reliance, um, as well as the third category on housing and housing policy. Um, one of the projects was the development of a modular housing uh, uh, development in the city. Um, and last was the Florida Climate Institute field course, which looked at a, a number of these issues. And so sort of by the numbers, uh, these grants uh, engaged 37 US faculty, postdocs and staff, 44 UF students, doctoral students and grad assistants, 13 uh, UF departments and four research institutes. Um, plus uh, an ever growing number of community meetings, interviews uh, and workshops at the local level, which have continued um, throughout the last seven months in the pandemic in a, in a virtual way. And so of those, course, of, these, of those funded research projects, three of them were courses. Um, and so, and this is just a sort of a small sampling of the work, but I, what I want to do is show a real quick video here um, that will sum that up. I apologize for the quality. It might be a little jumpy. So the objective of the class is to bring the students together from a, a range of different disciplinary backgrounds to put the skills they're learning in their own disciplinary fields together to solve problems in a real life situation in Florida. So the class is structured where the students take eight weeks of lectures from professors all across the University of Florida on issues relating to climate and hopefully apply everything that they've learned in the lectures um, on their projects in the community. When we got here, we took uh, several tours throughout the community and it, we just saw raw opportunity to develop things to connect people better or to make better use of the land and also of the social capital, the, the human capital that they have here. 
The number of people that we have talked to this week shows the value and the importance of interdisciplinary work for big challenges like this. We get here and you're defining the problem at the same time as defining the answer. And then you define the answer and then you go back and you redefine the problem. It's a constant dialogue and yet that learning has to be applied. You have to take it uh, out of the context of the university where oftentimes it can be kind of clean and you know safe and to sort of act as you go along to learn as you're making decisions is really important. It was a really intense so I'm going to keep moving. I'm realizing I'm running a little short on time. Um, so the fourth phase of the project um, that we are currently uh, engaged in, we're happy to um, to uh, discuss the fact that we've we we have moved through the pandemic, and I'd say um, successfully and that we were uh, actually funded for a second year of the project through the Jesse Paul DuPont Fund, who has funded this, this program all, all throughout both years. And there are three projects that have sort of emerged out of the first uh, year, one on urban con connections to the development of a civic center, a new civic center for the city, the second on um, environment, on the um, park system that we're continuing to develop, and third around housing and the development of affordable housing. And so that's the, the, the first sort of beginning of this, this program, um, how it works. Um, we hope that the outcome uh, of the program is that we leave behind a legacy and strong ties between the community and the university um, in each of these communities um, and, that, and that those ties continue to, to grow. However, we continue to move on. Uh, to additional communities. So right now we have a, a, a potential project in the Halifax River that we're, we're waiting to hear about. We have a proposal going in quite soon around Jacksonville. Uh, another proposal that was submitted recently for the NSF Cope, which we were part of a large team that would be looking at, at, at um, adaptation work around the state. Um, and then another element of our work is through fiber and looking at the, a sort of parallel focus on inland migration. Uh, so not only looking at the coastal con conditions, but how are, are, are these issues of, of climate adaptation, climate change affecting communities in Florida all the way into the coastal regions. So in summary, um, by integrating assessment, research, design and stakeholder dri driven implementation efforts, FRC creates an actionable process to move Florida communities toward a resilient future. Um, so thank you uh, very much. Um, my email here, jake.carney.ufl.edu, if anyone has any uh, follow-up questions or